Morning, Chief. Morning, Liam. Busy baby week? Yet? Had a baby? No, yet? nothing. Nothing. Still not here. Nothing. Didn't get a golden slipper, baby. No, Donny, I'm going to call it. Doncaster. <laughs> uh, mate, busy week. Big week. Um, been a great week, actually, for the team. Nine city winners, is it, in the last seven days? Eight days. Eight days? Yeah. And uh, sales this week. Big, great day, Saturday, slipper day on the home track. Three winners yesterday, it was on fire. Now things are going good. So, um, busy, very busy time of the year. But uh, stable's going well in Melbourne, going well in Sydney, and yeah, keeping us busy at the sales, which is a pretty hectic time, but team's handled it well. Did you pick up anything decent? Yeah, some really nice horses, very nice horses. Uh, where do I start? That's another addition, I suppose. But no, plenty of nice horses there, and uh, still a few available. <laughs> and if you'd like a share, call. Cool. No, I'm joking. Made three winners yesterday. Uh, probably a, a three sort of different horses, if you like. Um, Beyond Thankful, an import, second Australian start. Abasso, he'd had six starts um, for a couple of placings, and always, always promised that he'd. Uh, He'd break through, but it was a very dominant win. And Sagorn, no, or Sagan, um, Australian bloodstock horse. He's been a perfect example of a horse that's probably built his confidence. Yeah, most definitely. And a good ride from Nashra Willer helped him, helped get him home. And yeah, good to get a winner for Australian bloodstock. They're uh, by plenty of imports like ourselves and have had plenty of success. Um, Darren Dance and his team, they've been good supporters of us. And it was good to see them rewarded with a basso. And, so you see their colours winning a lot of races, which is good. And beyond thankful, as you say, it was one of the new batch of European horses and they're doing a great job and he certainly won with a bit of dominance there yesterday. Saturday, uh, some impressive wins, but uh, none more so than Catkins. Um, she was excellent. Very good. Um, yeah, it was, it was um, yeah, a tough call whether to go three weeks into the Doncaster, which would have seen a race in this Saturday, not last Saturday. But we decided um, running last Saturday and she was rewarded with a Group 2 win. So she'll be one of the favourites next start for the Group 1 Queen of the Turf. And Janoub, uh, he never looked the winner, but he, he still ended up coming out on top. Where does he head? Um, probably Brisbane, Hollandale Cup, Dooman Cup. But we'll just keep an eye on things next week. That Queen Elizabeth feels falling away. He's not nominated, but uh, could put in a late entry if we needed to. But, um, Jeff would have a spare 60 laying around. <laughs> but um, we'll just see uh, see um, see how things line up next week. Straight into Saturday, day one of the championships, Royal Ramwick. Uh, first race, the kindergarten stakes, Redoodable Heart. He was um, he was in the fields there Saturday at uh, Rose Hill. He scratched him from a wide draw. Very nice colt. Um, probably preparation away but he's at the stage where he needs to run and yeah it's a tough race to be racing first up in but uh, look as I say he's a nice horse and he'll run well. The PJ Bell stakes for the three year old fillies, uh, group three, two, two speedy fillies here, Champagne, Kath and Carmi Influence. Yeah big field, um, that's what the championship seems to be bringing, there's some good quality horses but my horses are good, all well, our horses are good. Uh, calming influence. She's a she's a winner. She's turned her. Well, she's been starting to impose a very impressive record. So uh, she'll be up on the speed. As will Champagne Kath. And she, I think she's got a Group Two placing next to her name now, and already a listed winner. So both very nice fillies, well placed, and should run well. The Schweppes Chairman's handicap, the 2600 metre Group Two event, two runners, uh, permit and opinion. Permit, we've struggled with the wet track, so hopefully for his sake it's a fine day on Saturday and leading into it. Um, hard to get a gauge on where he's at, so we've done everything we can with him at home and hopefully that's been enough to get his fitness levels up. So uh, he's won the race before, I guess he could do it again. Opinion, um, form lines are good, but he just can't sprint off the mark. He needs to be rolling into it. He actually beat Janoub a few starts back. On that occasion, Janoub was struggling to go with them at the 600, but his opinion was just rolling along. Uh, sit sprint, Janoub would beat him every day of the week, but when they're rolling along in a good staying test, opinion had his measure that day, so that's interesting to 
to think back back on and uh, hopefully it's a genuine 2600 on Saturday. The Daly TJ Smith stakes over this 1200 metres, a group one weight for age, uh, I'd say the premier uh, sprint race of the autumn. Massive field. Massive field. Good Huge. For yeah, outstanding. Few, We've got. A few punters can find one. Jim, you'll land some money on Saturday. <laughs> well, you won't have to worry. You've got the great Kelton Z star. He's very well, his work's been good, but he's clearly not as good on a rain affected track. Uh, slow or heavy. I'd, he won't be running. Uh, we need a perhaps a better side of slow, or definitely a dead track. He's certainly a horse that needs a good footing. He's got an amazing action and a great turn of foot. He can't show it on a wet track, so punters beware on a wet track. In fact, he probably won't be running on a wet track. Okay, take that into account. Uh, the Doncaster Mile will go through each runner in 25 words or less. Um, impressive to have such a big team. Uh, in such a great race, it's our favourite age. That's 20 words. Yeah, okay. Got right, a bow bend. Um, needs, needs a good track. Dead, I think it was, to show his best. So he's got wide draw, big weight on an unsuitable track. It's going to find it hard to win, but if that track did get back into the dead range, he's the best miler in the country, in my opinion. We've Mike. proven it. Three group, one miles over the past six months. Liking number five. Uh, should be getting close to his best fitness, but from a punting perspective, you'd look to be seeing a bit more form from him. We're expecting to finish midfield, and then suggest race like the Colin Hollandale Cup over 1800 in three weeks' time would be ideal. Sacred Falls. Winner of the race last year. Timing's perfect with this horse. He's been set for the race. Yes, he's got a bit more weight. Draw's not too bad for him. Uh, he's the four, or he's, he's coming right at the right time. It's been a long carnival. He's been set for the race. I think that's a big thing. Hawkesburg. Going outstanding. Running the Ramvert was good. It's been a good prep race for us in the past. And I think he's going to run the race of his life. Uh, sure, the mile's a bit short. He's drawn well. He's got a confident jockey aboard and handles all conditions. Or Royal Descent. Awkward Gate, Barry 20 or thereabouts. Um, I don't think you can sit wide with a sort of a medium weight and win. I think you need a bit of luck, so hopefully luck's on her side. She's clearly good enough. Her runs have been good. She's been set for the race as well, so fingers crossed for some luck. And the big grey, Weary. Who knows? Um, is he the next next big thing in Sydney? I don't know. The way he tacked the 400 metre mark on Saturday at Rose Hill and then let down on a straight to peg back a pretty good horse. I thought it was a terrific run. Takes on the big boys, but he's got 51 and a half kilos. Um, reasonable draw, handles all conditions. I think after the race will be a lot wiser, but you, could, you wouldn't be surprised if he won the race. Final race on the card is the Adrian Knox for the three-year-old fillies. Uh, we've got Marmello. She was disappointing last start on the Kensington track. That's all we've put it down to. Um, gee, last preparation, I thought she'd clearly be an Oaks filly. So she gets her chance on Saturday to show herself. Work's been fine. Um, hope she can finish off properly. Heading to Melbourne, uh, good little team of runners in there. The 1400 metre event, uh, naught to 90, or the benchmark 90 as we call them. Uh, Rugged Cross and Campanology. Rugged Cross, drawn very wide, will need luck. Campanology, touch disappointing first up, I thought. Uh, but the 1400 will suit. Uh, but like with all of these UK horses, you'd like to see him show a little bit more. So, leading towards Rugged Cross, but we'll need luck. Uh, only a pleasure in the 2400 metre race? Um, gee, it's a moderate race. Um, and he's out of form. I mean, he should finish in the first three. And he needs, needs to be rolling along and have things in his favour. In race seven, a uh, new addition to the stable, first start for us, just a girl, uh, heads to Melbourne for a Phillies and Mares event. Yeah, she's been down there a couple of weeks, settled in well, had a jump out, done everything right, ticked all the boxes except one barrier. 50-50 um, whether she'll go around land, we might wait for another day. They love carving us up with barriers down there. They do, it's not fair. Greedy carving, are you slipping something, a free lunch or something somewhere? <laughs> He does the handicaps, not the, not the barrier. Course. I'm sure he's got pool somewhere. He's a good man. He, he's uh, very professional down there. They, they 
do a great job. Right, mate. Good luck on Saturday. Big day's racing. Thanks very much.